You know, as it says, launch the dawn of a new year, and this is the last Sunday in January. Can you believe it already? We are five weeks into this new year, 2016. It's amazing how fast it's going. But I, I want to talk to you again about faith today. I've talked to you about a couple of ways of faith. Faith comes by hearing the hearing word of God. Faith without works is dead faith. So we talked about, we talked about the word, we've talked about works. And today, I want to talk about trials. How many of you have been going through some trials? Okay, so everyone that raised your hand, you need to get up at the end of the service and come forward for prayer, okay? Because I, I, everybody raised their hand in first service, but only, you know, two or three came forward for prayer. Because we do, I do believe God wants to do something today in the midst of your trials. You know what, I, I was praying this morning and the Lord said, I want you to, to just plead the blood of Jesus over the people. I, I just felt that so strong. I, 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 today, I just pleaded the blood of Jesus over myself. I, I just thank the Lord for the power of the blood, and I prayed it over me today, and I believe that's what we're going to do at the end of the service. We're just going to pray the power of the blood of Jesus over us. So if you stand with me today, we're going to read out of James chapter 1, 1 through 4. Hallelujah. Verse 1, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings, profiting from trials, my brother, encounter all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its complete, wor perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that today. I pray that, Lord, our trials, Lord, would have its perfect work in us, that our joy would be full in you, and that we would be made perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Lord, just by the show of hands, and Lord, and by your knowing, people are going through trials today. There's trials and tribulations that are coming against the body of Christ and against the people of God. And so, Father, I pray that we would grow through it, Lord, and learn from you so that we would be perfected in the midst of it. We thank you for this time in your word, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. How many of you made New Year's resolution? Nobody? Wow. Just a couple of you. Hey, it's good to see you, Sarah, you little baby. Welcome. Good to have you here today. She's got that little guy in there. All right. Praise God. She just had that guy just a couple of weeks ago. So it's good to have you with us. So, but when you make a resolution to make changes in your life, it can be either easy or it can be hard. Amen. I mean, how many of you ever well, made a commitment to something and then it was really hard, it was really easy? You know, it just depends on what you're focused on. Like if you make a commitment to lose weight, but you walk around and your focus is on what you can't have, chances are you're not going to last too long on that diet. You know, because, you know, Delonda tells me, you know, you can't eat french fries anymore. I'm like, okay, but what do I think? What do I think when I'm ordering food? Well, I want french fries, you know. You can't have a hamburger without french fries. Oh, a hamburger? Oh, man. You know, the first service, I was reminded of the widow maker at Claim Jumper. That is such a big burger. You know, <laughs> when, when you're focused on losing weight, but you're thinking about what you can't have, chances are you won't fulfill the diet. You won't win the prize. You won't, you won't lose the weight. You won't get slimmer and trimmer. You're, you're gonna, you know, and it's the same thing with anything in life. Whatever you're focused on is what you're going to do. Where your attention is, you know, as we've said before, whatever dog you feed is what's going to grow. So yeah, that's the same in this life. And in, in today, in this passage, James talks about trials. And, and in, by your own admission, many people are going through trials right now. And now... We can either grow through trials or we can go through trials. You know, when we're focused on the prize, we can grow through trials. See, so what, what does James tell us the prize is? To be made perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. That's the prize. You see, but if we're focused on the trial, if we're just zeroed in on that trial, Chances are we're just going to go through it. And if, that's, if, we're, or if it's a consuming thing for us, chances are we're going to go through it again. See, because the devil knows this. Whatever he can get you on, Angela, he'll replay it for you. Until we learn to grow through it and get like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going the way of that. I'm going to grow through this and I'm going to not 
I'm not going to just suffer through this trial. I'm not going to just go through it, but I'm going to grow so that I can get off this thing and get going with what God has for me so that I can be made perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. How many of you want that in your life? Amen. And we're all going through trials right now. You know, I, I know that, you know, when we went to, going to Africa, it seemed like every little thing was trying to hit me before I went to Africa. You know, from my passport being stolen, from my laptop being stolen, you know, to, to my, my mom getting sick and my mom passing. It just seemed like one thing after another was happening leading up to Africa. One of the pastors that went with me was in the hospital. He had to go to UCLA Medical Center. He, he just was, uh, you know, things were going on in his body. It just, it just seemed like so much stuff hit us before we went. You know, but we persevered and we went and we had an incredible ministry while we were in Africa. And I believe that God is perfecting us through those trials, amen? Because I'm not willing just to go through them. I want to grow through them, amen? So today, as, as we talk about trials, I'm going to point out a couple of different ways we go through trials. And you find out where you're at and what your situation is in the midst of this. But number one kind of trials, trials that we create by our decisions, how many of you have ever made a wrong decision that created trial? Oh, I'm talking to the right group. All right. So I, I, I was thinking this week about Abraham. You know, Abraham, the father of many nations. And he was promised that he was going to have a son. But he created a mess when he decided to sleep with Hagar, his wife's servant. And he had an Ishmael. How many of us have ever had an Ishmael? We stepped out of the will of God and we did something we weren't supposed to do and it birthed something we didn't really want in our lives. And, and that's what happened to, to Abraham. And, and I look at, you know, okay, what, what causes us to step out and do things ahead of God? And I put number one, impatience. We get impatient. We get tired of waiting on God. So we, we step out and we try and make it happen. We, we, we want to... Do it. Like, man, I wanted Dawn to have a car one time. I really wanted her to have a nice car. And she found a car that she really wanted. It was a Pontiac Grand Am. It was a, you know, the zippy around little car thing, you know. She loved it. This was many years ago, and, I, and I, I thought, I'm buying it. And I bought it, and they gave it to me, and we left. And then they called me up, and they said, oh, Mr. King, you know, we're going to need a more bigger down payment. And I'm like, Oh, man, all, all right. You know, I, I let him intimidate me. And, and I said, uh, all right, I'll, 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 can I do it over three weeks? And so, man, I, I stopped paying tithes. I stopped paying my bills. I did everything I could to get to of that car. I went into major debt just to get that car. Over a few months, I was financially just plummeting. And, but I got her that car. Now, every year, we had it for five years, every year, the car motor blew. Every year for five years, the car motor blew up. Until she totaled it. What a blessing. <laughs> she didn't get hurt or anything, that's why I can say it. But it, it, it just, I made that happen. And I paid the consequences. So when I was going to buy her a, a, a new van, I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, how much money can I put down? And he gave me a dollar amount. I said, how much money can I pay a month? And he gave me a dollar amount. So I went to go buy, uh, get to lease a van. And, and I got her this van. And, and when I sat down at the table, I sat down with the manager in the fleet at this place. And they said, okay, it's going to be this much a month and this much, this much down. And it was exactly what the Lord had told me. I said, I'm taking it. They washed it. I went out, drove it home. Here you go, honey. She said, wow, that's great. Thank you, honey. Jump up and down, kiss me and everything, you know. And then she went camping. She loaded up that van and she took the kids camping. You know, I stayed and worked and somebody's got to pay for the van, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teasing you. <laughs> so, but she, she went camping. And while she was camping, the, the guy called me and he goes, Mr. We're going to need a little bit more money down, like $1,800. I said, oh, okay, great. I said, well, my wife went camping with the van. She'll be back on Friday, and I'll bring it back. And he goes, what? I said, well, I asked the Lord what I could do, 
And he gave me numbers that I could use. So if you're going to change the, the, the agreement, I have to bring the van back. It's going to be used now. My wife went camping. He says, Mr. King, I'll call you back. I said, okay. And so he called me back the next day, and he said, Mr. King, we got you financed. Everything's great. Just same thing. Just come in and sign the, the papers. I went, oh, praise God. See, I didn't let the enemy intimidate. I didn't let anybody intimidate me. I stuck to my guns with what God wanted. But, you know, and I was a bit happy to give the van back because I learned through my first trial, you know, that I created for myself. I thought, I'm not going to be in such debt that I can't pay my tithes, amen. I want to I thrive in the Lord. So I, I was ready to give it back. So, you know, we get impatient and we do things, and then we worry. Worry. People are worried about everything today. They're worried about their finances. They're worried about the government. They're worried about, you know, things going on in this nation. They're worried, worried. Man, don't worry about anything. I mean, pray. Come to a Friday night. Let's pray together. Amen. Don't worry about what's going on in this life because I know the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God. Amen. Against the church of Jesus Christ. The gates of hell are not going to win. Amen. We win. We win. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. And I know that God has a plan for me, a plan to prosper me, not to harm me, to give me a future and a hope. Amen? See, these are the things that I speak out of my life. I don't speak what I'm worried about. I don't speak, I don't let worry take hold of me. When worry starts to try and creep in, I just start speaking the word over my life. It works. I, I have a lot of peace. You know, do trials happen to me? probably more than you. You don't think the enemy wants to, to disrupt my life? He comes against me all the time, but I'm just not going to take it. You know, I don't, I don't, I've told, I don't, I'm not about, I'm not of the mindset that I have to fight the devil. See, because what he does is he tries to get us worried and in fear that we want to war against the devil. That we want to bind this. We want to loose that. We want to pray against. We want to rebuke, tear down. You know, but I, I'm, I'm not the, I'm a warrior, but I don't, I don't feel like I have to fight the devil. I've told you before, what I do is I choose to put on the garment of praise. Okay, I put on praise. I praise the Lord, and the word declares that the spirit of heaviness will be gone from me. Amen. I choose to fight my battles by focusing on God and not my situation. See, because I can look at my situation and make declarations, make prayers, bind and loose in, yeah, and, and fight against the devil and what's going on. But I'd much rather keep my focus on Jesus and praise him in the midst of my trial. Because when I praise him, man, it's just the, the enemy's got to go. So I praise the Lord. Okay, and then I give to the Lord. I give my tithes and our offerings. Because it says if I give... My tithes and offerings in Malachi 3.10. He says, he will rebuke the devourer for me. He, he will rebuke the devourer. He's going to fight for me. So he's going to not only um, rebuke the devourer for my finances, but where the enemy comes to devour your health, where he comes to devour your relationships, where he comes to devour your marriage, where he comes to devour things going, you know, with people, relationships. Say, Lord, rebuke it for me. I, I'm not, I, don't, I want my focus on God. I don't want to live in worry and fear. I want to focus on Jesus. And then lastly, I, I forgive people. If people wrong me, if things happen, I forgive. It saves me from torment. And then while I'm forgiving, I love them. I love them. I love the people that have wronged me. You got to learn to love. You say, well, I don't like them. I don't care if you like them or not. You got to love them, amen? You got to engage in love because perfect love, amen, casts out all fear. It casts out fear. That's First John chapter 4. So when I'm loving people that have wronged me or I'm loving people that have, that have done things against me that I've that had to forgive of things, it just destroys the plans that the devil has. It destroys what the enemy has meant for harm. Amen? And then doubt. Doubt is a, a faith killer. Doubt kills faith. It's just very simple. It, it, you know, if you pray and you doubt, you're a double-minded man and you're, you're wishy-washy. You know, and you're going to get tossed around. But if you pray and you don't doubt, God says he'll be there. He'll answer us. But don't doubt. 
Don't let doubt creep in on what you believe the Word of God is telling you. Be sure of the Word of God. Amen. I love this thing. And I, pr I pray the Word of God over my life. Because I know that this Word is going to accomplish what it was sent out to do. Amen. That's what it says. He says, the Word will come and it will accomplish what it is supposed to before it returns back. So as I speak the word of God over my life, it's accomplishing what it was intended to do in my life. Amen? And so I, I don't doubt. I pray the word. Now, I, I, tr I, I know Ron King gets mixed in there, but I, I try to line everything up with the word, what the word says. You know, and, um, you know, we, we, we say things sometimes, we come and we get prayer for, for healing. And then we, you know, we make declarations. Be healed in the name of Jesus. And people say things like, well, we'll see. There's doubt. <laughs> you know, by, by own words. I remember one time I prayed for this lady's eyes. Man, God was moving so powerfully in that service. I prayed for her eyes to be healed. And she got touched by the Lord. And I grabbed my Bible. I said, here, read. Not this one. It was a smaller font one. I mean, you could read that from there, you know. <laughs> but it was a smaller font one. And she goes, oh, I can't. I can't read that. She didn't even try. She goes, I can't read that. I need my glasses. I said, but the Lord just touched you. I said, read. She goes, well, let me get my glasses. And I'm like, yeah, forget forget it you, you, you get, you get, there's got to be a measure of faith to what we do amen because if, if we're impatient we worry we have fear and we doubt then faith can't arise and God doesn't get the glory amen and that's where we've got to step into we've got to believe that what we're asking for God's got to do it and then don't worry Don't doubt. I know, man, I, I've, I've talked with, you know, I, I've been in church all my life. Haven't always been faithful. When I was younger, man, I, I had my time. But I, I still always came to church. And I've been in church all my, since I was four years old, my mom took us. So it's 50 years now I've been in church. And I've been heavily involved in this church since the late 80s. Um, serving in one capacity or another. Been on the pastoral staff since 1994 here in this church in one capacity or another. I was a youth pastor. I was a marriage and family pastor. I was a young adults pastor. I was a seniors pastor. You know, I, I, I've, I've done it all in this church. God has really allowed me to, to grow through it. But I know that the trials do come in the body of Christ. And I've had people tell me, well, I believe God can do it, but I don't know if he'll do it for me. See, that's doubt. You have to believe that the word of God is for you. That God loves you enough to do it for you. He's no respecter of persons. Amen. If he'll do it for, for one person, he'll do it for the other. If his word declares it, let's stand upon it and let's live it. Amen. Don't give the enemy the hold on you to, to lose your focus. Because when we lose our focus and we step out of faith, that opens the door for the trial. And, and God can use it to our benefit if we're willing to grow, like the car thing. I learned from it, and I grew through it. And, and it's amazing how God has done things in my life since then. Now, some trials, too, are a consequence to our sin. How many of you have ever sinned? And we have consequences to our sin sometimes. And, and you know, and I, I kind of felt like when I was just praying this week that, you know, when we, when we come to the Lord and we've, we've coming out of a life, sometimes there's a transitional period where we're, we're having to let go of the old so that we can step into the new. And it's letting go of the old way of thinking about things. Because when we're in the world, we have a way that we, we do things. We have a way that we think on things. So as we're renewing our mind in the Lord, we've got we've to allow time for growth. Amen? So, but the devil is not always the one attacking us. Sometimes it's just... Our impatience, worry, fear, and doubt that's bringing about the trial. But when you realize that that's what's happening, there's, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, admit that you created the mess. Admit it. Admit, oh, man, I messed up, Lord. I messed up. Oh, my gosh. 
You know, admit that you've created a problem in your life. Admit you tried to step out admit, and in front of God to try and make it happen. Admit that you were wrong. And then once you admit it, repent of it, amen? Repent means you're turning away from that, and now you're going to do things God's way. So admit it, repent it, and then see, or I, I have number three, refocus on the Lord. Get your focus back on what God has said. You know, because once you admit where you're at and you, and you repent of it, you just refocus. Is it that easy? Do you think it's that easy? It really is. It really is, because I know, because I've been there. And then, and then, number, then number four, examine the need in your life that caused you to jump ahead of God. Examine your life. God, why, did I, why do I try and make things happen? What is it in me that doesn't trust? What is it in me that wants to take the reins and do it myself? Learn something about yourself. This is growing through the trial. Learn something about you. What, what, what the reason why you may do things. And then take, take that very thing to the Lord and, and deal with it. So we don't go through it. We're growing through it. Amen. And then number five, admit that you're powerless and that you need God's, God's way of doing things and his way of being right. Admit that you need God help. God, I need help. This, on my own, is difficult. How many of you know some of the trials we go through are difficult, in there, and we need God's help, amen? And this leads us into number two. And number two is there's trials of life, that we live in a fallen world, and that things happen. You lose jobs, you know, people pass on, you know, just life happens. And sometimes, you know, that, that old, uh, uh, was that, Snickers commercial, sometimes life comes at you hard, you know? <laughs> and sometimes it does, man. You just need to eat a Snickers or something, you know? And, but, you know, sometimes life comes at us hard and we just need to pray, man. We need to say, seek God. But I, I you know, I, I went through and I just, some people in our country that are, you know, have, that went through some tough times but came out of those tough times really shining. And one of those guys is Bill Belichick, the, the coach of the New England Patriots. He, um, he'd been the defensive assistant and special teams coach and defensive coordinator for the New York Giants for 12 years before he landed his first head coaching job with the Cleveland Browns. And in 1991, he became the head coach of the Browns, and after four years, they fired him because he wasn't winning. And then in 2000, he was hired as a coach of the New England Patriots, and was responsible for the team's five Super Bowl appearances at the, in the Super Bowl. And he was also named the Coach of the Year three times. See, if he would have just wallowed in getting fired, he would have never been able to achieve those great successes. Same thing for Walt Disney. Walt Disney was a, a newspaper artist. He drew political cartoons and comic strips. And... Um, after hopping from job to job, he started a company called the Laughogram Studio, um, which gained popularity, but it went bankrupt. And then he came together and he created Walt Disney Brothers Studios, and he finally struck it with Steamboat Willie and uh, Mickey Mouse. And uh, one of the hugest companies in the world now, Disney. And then you got Steve Jobs who was fired from Apple, fired from his own company. Wouldn't that just hit you hard? <laughs> that the board decide to fire you from your own company, something you started. But in getting fired, it gave him the opportunity to work on other things, and he started a company called Next, a computer company that catered to the business crowd as well as the vision of Lucas's films computer graphics division, which later became Pixar. And then he came back to Apple and created the iMac, the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad. Can you imagine if he would have just quit? If he would have just give up? Delon and I were, we took Carly down to Huntington Beach this last Monday to, to go out on the pier, go to Ruby's and have some lunch. We let our grandson, little Jay, play in the sand down there and everything. But, uh, there's this bear out in front of this uh, 
you know, chalk candy shop. They have the caramel apples and the fudge and everything. And this big old teddy bear, he, he's about this big. He's sitting there kind of hunched over, and he said, they, on his shirt it says, they told me how I have to quit eating chocolate. I told him I'm not a quitter. <laughs> Don't quit, amen. Don't be a quitter in this life. You got to keep going. I look at King David, who was, um, you'll love this picture of King David I found, and I'm sure that's how he looked. And, <laughs> but King David was anointed king as a young man, but Saul was the king. And King David, he killed Goliath. And then he became like the warrior for, the, for Israel, and he went out and he was conquering um, armies and stuff, and, and the people began to praise him for his victories. They said, Saul's killed his thousands, David his ten thousands, you know. They began to really lift up David, and Saul began to despise him and hate him. And, and so the man that was anointed for, to be the king went on the run because Saul spent many years trying to kill him. See, I mean, that is a, just a, a direct a, attack of life. You know, from trying to be who God's called you to be, and then somebody not liking it, and trying to destroy your life. And David, he stayed the course. He didn't give up on the, the dream that God had given him, and he fulfilled being king of Israel. Then we have trials that are a direct attack from the pit of hell. And that's number three, the enemy attacks us. The enemy attacks us. I don't like to give the enemy a lot of credit in my life because I know that in Christ I'm victorious. But I do know this, the enemy does attack us. You know, the Bible says he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But the key word in there is whom he may devour. You know, I, I just, you know, my mom, you know, um, battling for, for six months, she still drove herself to every treatment she went to. She still came to church. She said, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. You know, and, and that, that was a beautiful thing. And, and she, she told your husband, uh, Conrad, she said, if I can come to church, you can certainly come to church, you know? Because, <laughs> you know, she was challenged, but she said, listen, if I'm going through this, you can be in church on Sundays too. If I'm driving myself around with what I'm going through, you can be in the house of God on Sundays, amen? And that was my mom's testimony. Even though she was being attacked, she said, I'm pressing forward, amen? She wasn't willing to give up and quit. You know, and I think about Job. You know, that guy, he went through some stuff, man. He lost his kids, he lost his his cattle, his servants, he lost so much. And his friends came to him and, he, he, listen, don't ever read the book of Job and try to build a doctrine off of what his friends said. Because in the end of the book, it says Job was right and his friends were wrong. Job was right and his friends were wrong. And you may be going through a Job experience where you feel like everything's just being torn apart, you're being ripped up, but stay the course, amen? Because Satan said, you let me touch Job, he'll curse you and die. God said, let's see. And Job stayed the course. Job didn't give up on God, even though he was in the midst. I mean, he had boils all over his body. He would sit with a, a, like a broken pot and scrape them off. I know that's very sick, but that's what it reads in the Bible. You know, and he just stayed the course in the midst of it. And his wife even said, why don't you just curse God and die? Nope. He stayed the course. But I know the enemy does come against us. The enemy tries to get us off track. He doesn't want us focused on God. He doesn't want our attention to be focused on him. So when the trials come, you know, it's what, where is your focus going to be? If the enemy knows, well... They're getting close to God. All I got to do is do this. And I'll get their attention again. See, he knows that stuff. He knows how to get to you. He knows what works against you. So he'll use it, and you'll, you'll, you'll be like, oh my gosh, why does this always happen to me? 
Because it works. Because the enemy can use it to get you off track. You see, but it, it just seems like when people try to press into God, they try to grow in the Lord, they make a commitment. I'm going to read, I'm going to pray, I'm going to be at every meeting I can be at. I'm just going to grow in the Lord. And then the enemy says, okay, let's see. You know, that's what the enemy did to me. I said, I'm going to be a tither. And then the car motor blew up. And I'm like, oh, well, i got to fix the car. You know, God would want me to fix the car. You know, God wants me to go to work, you know. And, and then, you know, then I, I said, well, once I get that fixed, well, I'm going to be a tither. And then the washing machine would blow up. And, well, I'd fix that. And then I said, well, God wants me to be a tither. And Dawn would be like, you better start tithing, buddy. And then, <laughs> you know, this was when I was younger, you know. And, and uh, things would always, every time I'd, I'd commit to tithing and I'd start growing in it, man, something, the enemy would hit me with something. And, and I always gave in to it. And so one day I had these brothers, the deacons, pray over me because I said, man, I am struggling with this. I admitted my struggle. I said, I want to be a tither, but man, it is so hard. It seems like every time I make a commitment to tithe, the enemy smacks me. And so they prayed for me. And you know what? I made a commitment. I'm tithing no matter what. And you know what? I started tithing and the enemy hit me again. I'm like, are you kidding me? But you know what? I had enough money to pay for it. And I still tithe. And then the next time, I still tithe. See, but the word declares, if you submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. Amen? He will flee. And that's the promises. That I, see, I'm looking towards the prize and not my situation. See, I'm looking towards the prize of he will flee. I'm looking towards the prize of being made perfect, complete, and lacking nothing instead of looking at what I'm going through. See, because what we go through can be consuming. It can consume our thoughts. It can consume our time. It can consume our emotions to where we're just constantly thinking about it, can't sleep, can't eat, you know, just focused on that issue. And that's not where we want to be, amen? We want to be in the joy of the Lord. We want to be perfected in the Lord, amen? And I think even of the disciples, you know, when they were, Jesus was about to go to the cross, and, and, he, and he, the Lord told Simon, Peter, he said, Satan's asked for you. He wants to sift you. You know, the enemy's out there like a roaring lion seeking whom? he can devour. So the, the objective that I believe as the body of Christ we have to work on is keeping those doors closed. Don't give the, the devil any reason to be able to attack you. And, and, and like I said, I, I praise the Lord, I give to the Lord, I forgive people and I love people. Because when I, get, when I put on the garment of praise, heaviness is gone. When I give the Lord, he rebukes the devourer. When I Forgive people saves me from torment. When I love people, it saves me from fear and torment. Because fear leads to torment. So I, I do my part, amen? I do what I'm supposed to do. So that I, I'm not trying to open any doors, Abe, so that I, the enemy has a right. Even the way I talk. See, we, we talk so much not the word all the time. We just speak it. And we don't mean to. Because we like to express how we feel. We are the most feeling people. We, t <laughs> we like to express it too. I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm sick, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm, you know, and, and our feelings are never right, you know, well, I, we don't ever walk, we, it's not very often I hear somebody say, oh, I feel like praising God today, it's like, that one I don't hear all the time, you know, but if, if you, we come in and we say, oh, I feel like praising God, you wake up in the morning, I feel like praising God, and, and you put on that garment when you get up in the morning, and, and you know, Jawan said, he said he challenges the worship team to worship the, way, the Lord in different ways. So he said, this week, praise him in the shower. I said, amen. I like to praise the Lord in the shower. Praise him in the morning when you get up. Put on a garment of praise. Give to somebody. Give to the Lord. Give something, amen. If you don't have anything to give, come here. We'll give you something to give to people. Amen. Valerie's got thousands of pounds of food every week to give away. Ah, oh, Valerie, what a great testimony you had this last week. Can I share it? So this brother comes to Valerie and he says, because Valerie gets all the leftover food from the school district every day. 
Corona North Grove School District. She gets pizzas, Miguel's burritos. She gets salads. She gets all kinds of things. I mean, you know, sometimes it's over a thousand pounds of food a day that she gets. So she worked it out with a brother that's been coming to celebrate life that um, he could come on Thursdays and get food and then he would distribute it to six families, seven families that he knows that need food. And so this week he picked it up and he couldn't, um, he couldn't get a hold of all the families. And so he didn't know what to do with the food. He didn't want to throw it out. So he prayed and he said, Lord, what do I do with this food? And the Lord just spoke laundromat to him. So he, he went to the laundromat that he knew of. And when he walked in the laundromat, he said, hey, I have a bunch of food in my car from the Lord. And if you're hungry and in need of food, it's free. Take as much as you want. And a lady came out there that had kids and cried because she didn't have any food for her kids. Isn't that amazing? What a testimony. Somebody just said, oh, I'm going to take some food. See, that could be you. You could do that too if you want. You just talk to Valerie. Wave at them, Valerie, so they know who you are. She gets food five days a week. We have a food bank here on Fridays just to touch people's lives. Just don't get consumed by what you're going through. But learn to give your way out of it. Learn to praise your way out of it. Don't give the enemy any footholds in your life. Amen? Forgive in love. I try to cancel out everything that the enemy would have, any, right, legal, any legal right to come against me. I try to close those doors. Now, you know, you say, well, what about Job? Job lived in fear. Job had fear for his kids. He, he used to sacrifice to the Lord continually for his kids because he was afraid that they might do something that offended God. He probably had some rowdy kids, you know, and um, they were probably doing things, and he was probably right, but don't let fear creep in. So before you give the enemy credit for all you're going through, though, make sure it's not happening because of your decisions. Make sure that your decisions are or along the basis of what God really wants to do and what he is doing in your life. But if you know that you've opened a door in your life, just go back to this. Number one, admit that you created the mess. Number two, repent for it. Number three, refocus on the Lord. Number four, examine the need in your life that caused you to jump ahead of God. Number five, admit you're powerless and that you need God's way of doing things in your life. I mean, it's, it's very simple. We just take the time to be with the Lord, casting aside those things. Now sometimes, with what we go through, it can be very difficult. And it can be very hard to praise God. Because this life can be very challenging. I get that. But that's why we need each other. We need each other so that we can call somebody that will love us and that will say, hey, let me praise God with you. Let me praise God for you. That we can encourage and build each other up. Amen. We need each other in the body of Christ. We need to be able to build each other up in our faith and encourage each other. Not somebody that's going to tear you down. You don't want Job's friends in your life. <laughs> Job's friends blamed Job for everything that he was going through. You know, don't be the judge. Be the, the, be the one that comes alongside and says, I'm going to stand with you no matter what. I'm going to lift you up in this season, and I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to stand with you. Amen? Let your eyes be focused on the prize of being made perfect, complete, and lacking nothing in your life. Let's not allow the enemy any more ground. Amen? Let's give the glory to God. And let's put on that garment of praise. And let's just let God destroy what the enemy has plans. Amen. And keep our focus renewed on Jesus. So, Father, we come before you today. Father, we pray right now, Lord, for the victory in, in the trials. I pray, Father God, that in the midst of our trials, we would grow through them, Father God. 
That, Lord, that you'd show us how to, to stay focused on you. That, Lord, that we'd be willing to admit when we're wrong, repent, Father God, and refocus our eyes on you. And, Lord, if there's something in us, a deep-seated need that causes us to step out of your will and, you, and out of faith, Father, I pray that you bring revelation to us, Father, so that we can admit, Lord, we're powerless that, without you. We need you, Jesus. We need you. And we need each other, Father. I pray that, Lord, that we would connect like never before as the body of Christ. Lord, that we'd be filled with love for, and compassion for each other the way that you have love and compassion for us. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask if the altar workers would come to the front right now. And altar workers, by, by what I, the Lord told me today, you're to... You're to just plead the blood of Jesus over people's lives today. You're to pray for the blood of Jesus to just wash over and destroy what the enemy's been doing. So why don't you stand with me today? I know that many of you have trials, and maybe you just need to confess it. Maybe you just need to admit what's going on today and, and give it to the Lord. But why don't you come and let one of these men or women of God pray for you today. And we're just going to pray the blood of Jesus over you. So go ahead and come right now. I'm just going to pray for everybody else. Father God, you know every single person here today, and you know what we've been going through. And I pray, Father God, that, Lord, our focus would stay on you. Lord, that the trials of this life would not consume us, Father. But I pray the blood of Jesus over every person here today, that, Lord, the power of the blood of Jesus be at work, a washing and a cleansing over each one of us, Lord. That, Lord, your joy would be our strength as we sang today. That, Lord, we'd step into your joy, your covering, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that we would grow through the trials of this season, Father God, so that we can be more effective for the kingdom, and, Lord, that we would minister it to other people. Lord, I praise you and I thank you. I pray that you bring everybody back safely tonight at 6 o'clock, Lord, as we celebrate baptism, Father God. Lord, and that you would just continue to be with us and strengthen us. I pray protection, healing, and blessing over the people of God today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.